I see lots of waving. Perfect. Um, all right. Yeah, thanks everyone for having me. Um, uh, my name is uh, Arian or Arian for the Dutch speakers, but I'm not too fussed about the pronunciation. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, and I've been asked to tell you a little bit about doing good and creating value from a more corporate perspective. Uh, and I'm sure when you were uh, you know, talking about humanitarian challenges that KPMG wouldn't be the first company that came to mind. Uh, it wouldn't be for me, at least. Uh, so hopefully I can teach you a little bit or tell you a little bit about how we work together with NGOs and uh, maybe more importantly, uh, give you some tips and tricks on how to work together with, with, with KPMG, but also corporate organizations in general. Um, four topics that I want to touch upon today or actually the next 10 or 15 minutes or so. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself and, and KPMG as a company um, before we go any further. Uh, afterwards, I'll tell you briefly about creating value from a commercial perspective. Obviously, we're a commercial company, uh, but even from that role, from our day-to-day -day business, we try to create value. Um, afterwards, more importantly, I want to uh, take over to our social responsibility, so our non-commercial business when it comes to uh, challenges, you know, humanitarian, but also other kinds of social uh, challenges that we see. Uh, and lastly, I want to talk about some key takeaways or some tips, if you like, on uh, you know how to work uh, together uh, with a corporate organization like like KPMG. As promised, just a little bit about myself. Um, so Arian or Arian or anything in between is fine. Um, I'm 28 years old. Been working with KPMG for the last four years already. Um, before that, I was working with the United Nations uh, in New York for a bit. Um, I live and work as well, obviously, in Rotterdam, so that's why you see my uh, parts of my living room uh, behind me. Um, with KPMG, I work uh, solely on, on the public sector, like Papine said, so uh, the clients that I serve are usually ministries, but also NGOs every now and then. Um, and I do that from a strategy point of view. So it can be, it can be anything, honestly. Um, before I go any further and, and tell you a little bit more about KPMG, I have two questions uh, for the audience today. Uh, the first one is uh, quite simply, uh, have you ever heard of, of the company KPMG? Uh, and if so, please raise a hand or wave or smile. Or just make me notice if you have or have not. So I know that what I'm working with today. Right. Yeah, I think mo most people. I think most people. All right. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Um, second question, a, a bit more complex, but hopefully the technique works, is I'd like to ask to take your phone. So hopefully you're not using it to be part of this session, but take your phone out uh, and scan the, either the QR code on the right-hand side of your screen or go to kpngvote.nl and fill in the code, uh, which is free with a capital F and then 35026. So I see already five people joining, six, seven, perfect especially for the people that actually do know KPMG, which, uh, like I said, probably most of you are. Um, and just keep on joining if you want, but I want to go over to the, to the question that I have for you. Um, and for the people who are still joining, the link and also the code are uh, in the bottom of the screen here. Um, but just so that I know what I'm working with here is, uh, could you please indicate, it could be a word, could be multiple words, um, uh, what comes to mind when talking about KPMG? Please, uh, you know, whatever comes to mind, whatever you associate with the company, uh, whatever you think the image is, please be bold. Um, don't worry about hurting my feelings. They're not hurt very easily, so you can be brutally honest with me. Um, but that's how I know what to work with today. All right, consultancy, oh, perfect. I'm very happy that consultancy come up, comes up biggest instead of audit. A lot of people always think I'm a, an accountant. Uh, which I'm not, obviously. Big four, it's true. Corporate, slow, maybe, uh, very much true, very slow, uh, actually. Uh, elite, probably, to some extent as well. Money, yeah, I, I reckon most of the things that, that would come to my mind as well if you ask me what, what I think uh, when talking about KPMG. So I'll try to take this in, in, in the next presentation, but if you have any questions on, on the company itself at a later point, please save them for the Q&A. Um, and I'll try to play a little bit with this as well. Serious, that's very much true actually. All right, perfect. Thanks guys. You can put away your phone now. Um, and I'm gonna, uh, like I said, I'm gonna talk just briefly about creating value from a commercial perspective. So very briefly, most of you have known KPMG, um, KPMG at a glance. So we're a professional service organization. We do tax, 
advisory uh, and audit. Obviously, I'm in the advisory part, which is the best part and most fun part of KPMG, but I can tell because there are no accountants from KPMG here today. Um, we're located in uh, 147 countries, and out of those 147, they decided that Amstelveen would be the most exotic place to have our, our head office. So if you drive down the A9 highway, you can't miss it. Huge, a huge building. Uh, it's also in the picture, actually, a huge building. So you can't miss it. Um, and we have here in the Netherlands alone, we have about 3,000 uh, colleagues uh, and over 200,000 uh, uh, people worldwide. Um, and when I talk about creating value, I, I have to talk a little bit about our own values. So the values that we try to live up to, um, and I, I, I place them here on this slide. So it's integrity, excellence, courage, uh, together for better. And I know this sounds like five random buzzwords to you made up by some PR agency firm. That's true to some extent. Um, but I, I also like to talk about how we try to live up to these values and how these values also impact our day-to-day -day commercial business. Uh, and especially uh, for today, I want to focus on the first one, integrity and doing what we think is right. And the last one for better, uh, doing what we think uh, that matters from our professional point of view. So how did influence our, our business? I, I've just listed some of the commercial projects that we're currently working on or we have been working on for the last year or so. So a lot about around COVID, a lot around uh, the climate treaty, for example. But what I see in my company uh, in comparison to when I started four years ago is that based on the values that we have, we try to make more and more a conscious choice. So a conscious choice of what clients we want to serve, a conscious choice of what sectors we want to be in, for example, we have interesting discussions on you know, whether or not do we want to advise companies who are in the tobacco industry. What do we want to do when it comes to fossil fuels? You know, those are the conversations that we're having today, uh, where, to be honest, I think the conversations four years, four plus, four plus years ago, we're probably more about money. You know, where is the money? Where can we make the money? What's the most important area of growth that we see? So we try to be more conscious about where to go, and, and that actually reflects on the projects that we do. Clearly, there's way more than this. I can you know, talk the whole afternoon about interesting projects that we do. I'll save you the, the boringness. Um, but just to give you a grasp of understanding that we actually try to create value also in our commercial day-to-day -day business. Second, and probably more importantly, our social responsibility. So I talked a little, about, a little bit about the commercial side of things, uh, but we feel uh, that we also have a, a social responsibility. So apart from you know, the way we make our money, uh, we try also to contribute to a more fair and sustainable world. And uh, I summarize it in this in this quote. I'm not going to read it out loud, but uh, in essence, it means, well, we're a big company. You know, we have a global footprint. Um, so we feel very much obliged to, uh, to also contribute to that fair and sustainable world. And how we do that is if through uh, several actions, uh, but one of which I want to highlight today, uh, and it's about our uh, the 12,000 hours that we have uh, available for a more fair and sustainable world. So how does it work? Every year, uh, KPG Netherlands says, well, we have 12,000 hours available and we want to spend them on projects that contribute to either uh, good health and well-being, uh, quality education or uh, climate action. And these are you know, three of the, the sustainable development goals that were set by the United Nations. They changed as well. So it's not like we only focus on these three, but as of now, this is the focus that we have. Um, and we say, well, when there's NGOs or, or other nonprofit organizations that have a certain challenge uh, in, in this field or related to these fields, um, we can help them out uh, completely free of charge, pro bono as part of our 12,000 hours. Um, and it can be any of our advisory advisory services that we that we lend. So it's literally just like an, a regular project for me, uh, apart from the fact there's no bill at the end. Uh, so that's how uh, one way that we try to contribute to a more fair and sustainable world. And uh, I'll try to make it a bit more concrete. So on this slide, I just uh, posted a few things of you know what you can think of of what we could do uh, for for a challenge. So it could be anything from a funding strategy to strategy in general. It can be business cases. It can be process optimization. So anything that KPMG would do as a company for any professional or or any uh, client, so to say. Uh, we would also do on a pro bono basis. And on the left hand, uh, sorry, the right hand slide, aside, uh, and the bottom of this slide, 
you'll see some of the companies that we have worked for in the past, but also currently working for. And I think there's 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 way more than these, but these are just a few that I could find uh, easily. And also a few that I've uh, worked on personally. So Stichting Jarige Job I've worked with, uh, and also more recently, uh, Vluchtening Werk. And that's the one that I wanna uh, just talk to you a bit more briefly about, because it's, it probably still seems a bit abstract, um, but I can give you an example of how, how we work together with Vluchtening Werk. And I, I think most of you have known of Flüchtling Werk, it's a Dutch NGO that uh, helps refugees to find a place in, in our Dutch society. And they do so by providing guidance, but also providing uh, language courses. Uh, and that was actually, they were doing quite well um, until this point where uh, the Dutch government said, well, you know, as of now, the refugee themselves, they say, well, I have to learn uh, the Dutch language or I want to learn the Dutch language. Hey, Flüchtling Werk. Uh, can you help me out? And they will obviously say, yes, of course, no problem. We have teachers and everything. But now the Dutch government said, well, we want that to be more uniform. So uh, the municipalities where the refugees are located, they have to uh, uh, buy in language courses collectively. So they would know, you know, they have the right quality. We have enough uh, language courses for everyone. And that uh, gave Flüchtlinger two big challenges, one of which was they never entered a tender before. They didn't know how to write a tender. Uh, second, they didn't have the capacity to be part of the tender in every part of the country. So they couldn't do Gouda and Venendaal and Maastricht all together. They had to prioritize what municipalities to, to go to, right? Um, so we, what we helped them out, they came to us, they said, well, we have this issue or we have these challenges. Can, can you help us out? So we helped them out as part of our 12,000 hour initiative. Um, and together with Flüchtlingwerk, we built a, a strategic framework saying, well, okay, what are your ambitions? What are your goals, your vision? Uh, what are the chances of winning in a certain municipality? Uh, based on all those inputs, we, we drafted together a, a strategic framework uh, based on which you can score basically all the municipalities uh, and see how you can prioritize them, right? So where are the chances of winning the highest or where do you want to be from your ambition point of view, right? So maybe you can win easily in one municipality because there's no, not a lot of competition but maybe it's not an interesting place to be, right? Based on your ambition. So we really tried to put that all together, all those criteria together in this strategic framework um, and work side by side with, with the organization. And as of now, we're they're right in the middle of receiving all those requests for proposals and really using that framework to define, okay, which municipality should we go to and uh, where should we put our capacity to, to, to use. Um, so that's just one example. I, I can probably talk for hours on other examples that we've done with other companies. Uh, but it was a very fun project we did last summer uh, together with Flüchtlinger. So it was a real project, a uh, real client, a real scope and a real deadline, uh, but it was all pro bono. And that brings me just to the key takeaways or some, some tips that I'd like to give when it comes to working together with, with uh, between NGOs and, and corporate organizations, because I think it's, it's still a bit weird, right? To talk about a company like KPMG when you talk about humanitarian challenges, but I think there's a lot to win from both sides. Um, first thing I wanna to give to you is, is, is be bold. And I reckon that sounds very easily uh, said where it is, um, like I said, it's not the first company that will come to mind, right? But there's a lot of knowledge uh, there. There's a lot of people there, 3,000 3, in total in Holland alone. Um, so why not you know, send that email make that phone call, see what you can mean for each other, right? Just think about that company. And it doesn't have to be KPMG, right? It can be any corporate organization, but just try to see what you can mean for each other. Second, uh, align your goals. I think it's very important that, uh, for example, when I talked about our 12,000 hours earlier, I was talking about three sustainable development goals, right? Uh, the climate action, uh, good education, good healthcare find a company that fit your goals as well. And if you have, let's say, a, a challenge when it comes to gender equality or whatever, be sure to find a company that sees your challenges as well, right? And have the similar ambitions that you have because it's so much easier to work together. Um, third, define your scope. I think MindMark uh, and UNAID now already done with the help of DCHI, but it's very important to know what you're looking for, right? And that also brings me to the fourth, the, the fourth one is use the power of your partner. Um, because you guys, you know what your challenge is, right? You know what you've done in the past, what you've tried, what worked, what didn't work. Uh, KPMG doesn't know. We have no clue, to be honest, right? 
Um, but what we do know, we do know how to write a business case. We do know how to write a funding strategy. We do know how to, you know, uh, do process optimization. So really try to see what you need in a project based on your scope of your challenge and see what a corporate organization such as KPMG, but to be honest, it goes for every corporate, uh, see how they can help you to fulfill that challenge. Uh, and with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. And I'd like to give the word